Zendaya got her start in Hollywood at an early age. From dancing on the Disney Channel to hanging out with sandworms, Zendaya has completely transformed before our eyes. Zendaya Coleman knew from a young age that the world of entertainment was her calling. After joining the dance group Future Shock Oakland, she honed her craft at the Oakland School for the Arts and the California Shakespeare Theatre in Orinda. She hopped between bit parts and modeling gigs for a while before landing a role on Disney Channel's Shake It Up in 2010. In the role of the bookish, hard-working high schooler and aspiring dancer Rocky Blue, Zendaya got to show off her dancing background, her gorgeous singing voice, and her extraordinary charisma. She also discovered a natural knack for comedy. Shake It Up led to roles in other Disney Channel projects and an appearance in season 16 of Dancing with the Stars, on which Zendaya broke ground as the youngest contestant ever up to that point. Alongside professional dancer Val Chamowski, she finished as the season's runner-up. Like many young Disney stars, she also launched herself as a singer. Her 2013 self-titled pop album that spawned the hit single Replay was well-received. By 2015, Zendaya was already reconfiguring the realm of possibility for a Disney star. She became a big enough name to have an entire show built around her. The rising star didn't stop at just starring on Disney Channel's spy comedy KC Undercover, however. She ultimately became a producer of the show despite still being a teenager. From that point on, it was nowhere but up for Zendaya. KC Undercover proved a sterling showcase for her outsized star power and she built on it with roles in two hit films. The first was, of course, Spider-Man Homecoming, where she played an unusually droll Mary Jane counterpart, Michelle M.J. Jones. Zendaya played the character to perfection, endearing her to Marvel Cinematic Universe fans the world over. What are you hiding, Peter? I'm just kidding, I don't care. Bye. The other role came in the hit musical The Greatest Showman, in which she and Zac Efron played star-crossed lovers Ann Wheeler and Philip Carlyle. As if the world needed any more proof of Zendaya's tremendous pipes, she plays a trapeze artist in the film, so she had to add that to her already long list of abilities. A key aspect of Zendaya's public persona from early on has been her sense of style. A fashion model from a young age, she garnered as many fans on social media for her always impeccable looks as she did for her acting and music. In 2015, she launched her own shoe line, Daya, and dished a complex about her enthusiasm for the endeavor. She said, I want to make something that I love, that I'm going to wear out, that I'm going to work on the red carpet, that I'm going to be proud of. Soon enough, with the help of her brilliant personal stylist, Lil Roach, it became clear that Zendaya had grown into nothing less than a fashion icon for her generation. In 2018, she partnered up with Tommy Hilfiger to design a collection that found its way to the Paris and New York Fashion Weeks. And she made a point of having her runways celebrate the beauty of women of color, plus-size women, and older models. The following year saw Zendaya star rise even higher in the fashion world. She made a splash in back-to-back -back editions of the Met Gala, with stunning Joan of Arc-esque armor in the 2018 edition and a dreamy light-up Cinderella dress that managed to stop the 2019 High Camp Festival in its tracks. In addition to releasing her own music, Zendaya has appeared in the music videos of several high-profile pop artists. The actor is one of over a dozen individuals who feature in Taylor Swift's popular Bad Blood video. Each featured celeb got to choose the name of their character, and Zendaya chose Cutthroat. Zendaya talked about the video and working with Taylor Swift on Entertainment Tonight. There are some really powerful women in this um, cast, yep, ensemble, yep. and I think that that's really cool. For me, it was just a cool experience because she asked me to be a part of it. Zendaya also appeared in Beyonce's visual album Lemonade featuring in the music video for the song All Night in 2016. Then in 2017, Zendaya also appeared in Bruno Mars' Versace on the Floor video. After two Disney Channel shows, Zendaya's next series took her career to new heights. She hit new milestones with her portrayal of Rue Bennett in Euphoria, the second most-watched HBO show behind Game of Thrones. Created by Sam Levinson, the series follows students at a high school in California, Balancing teen issues alongside darker topics like drug abuse and grief, Zendaya shared with Collider, When I read it, I immediately just loved it. There's no other way to put it, I just fell in love with the script. And I fell in love with Rue and all of the characters. The show sees the actor pushing herself to her limits, like in the opening scene of season 2's fifth episode. Zendaya commented to Entertainment Weekly about the episode, I mean, I beat myself up. I still have some scars on my legs and I've got quite a few bruises. I'm so I'm sorry. You mean to scare you? I, I just, I don't know what to do. 
Not only did the role introduce the actor to new audiences and help put her Disney Channel days behind her, but it also helped her make history as the youngest winner of the Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series. Zendaya has won the award twice, along with several others for her role as Rue. The actor has also contributed music to Euphoria, earning two Emmy nominations for Outstanding Original Music and Lyrics. Zendaya continued working with Sam Levinson on the black-and-white film Malcolm and Marie. Starring alongside John David Washington, the movie follows a writer, director, and his girlfriend as they argue about their relationship and the reviews of his latest project. Malcolm and Marie was filmed over two weeks in the summer of 2020, as one of the first movies to start and finish production during the COVID-19 pandemic. Zendaya and Washington received praise for their portrayals, but that didn't help the poor critical reception. Most of the criticism was aimed at the screenplay. Jake Coyle wrote for the Associated Press, In self-indulgent dialogue reverberating around ego, art, and filmmaking, Malcolm and Marie more reflects a Twitter argument brought to life. What drew more attention than the reviews was that when Netflix bought the distribution rights for Malcolm and Marie, most individuals involved with the movie received a cut of the $30 million. The cast and crew had a chance to earn film points, which gave them a percentage of the revenue. Zendaya shared with Variety, it just felt like the right thing to do. These are the people that are laying all the tracks and were with us through the whole thing, and literally putting their blood, sweat, and tears into it. Zendaya returned as MJ for 2019's Spider-Man Far From Home and 2021's No Way Home. She takes on a more significant role in both installments. In the latter, she's trying to help Peter Parker as villains from several different timelines appear on their Earth. The gang teams up with the Spider-Men from those timelines to put the villains back in their place. Why'd you do that? I was trying to see if you have the tingle thing. MJ experienced plenty of growth over the trilogy. Zendaya shared in a behind-the-scenes featurette that she enjoyed watching the two characters rely on each other and grow together in different ways. In 2021, Zendaya joined a well-known franchise when she took over as the voice of Lola Bunny in Space Jam A New Legacy. Landing the gig was a huge moment for the actor, not only because Lola is an iconic character, but also because of the people involved with the sequel. Zendaya told Entertainment Weekly, It was flattering because I got a call from Ryan Coogler, who is a producer on the film. I've always wanted to work with him. She appreciates the reimagining of the character, who underwent a redesign for the new movie to be less provocative and have a more developed personality. This decision received backlash online, which Zendaya wasn't expecting at all. She continued, I didn't know that was going to happen. I definitely know we love her, but I didn't know it was going to be as much of a focus as it was. Despite the reaction to Lola's new appearance, Zendaya is happy to have had the chance to be a part of the franchise, saying that it was a great experience. Zendaya continued with sci-fi and fantasy films, taking on the role of Charney in Denis Villeneuve's Dune franchise. Charney is a Fremen warrior who, for most of the first movie, appears in Paul Atreides' visions. She becomes his love interest in the second film. The films are based on the book of the same name by Frank Herbert published in 1965. Despite being a significant part of the marketing campaign for Dune, Zendaya only appeared in the first film for seven minutes. There was initial disappointment from moviegoers, though the director confirmed the goal was for Charney and other characters to appear more in Dune Part 2. Villeneuve shared with the Los Angeles Times, There are some characters that are less developed that I'm keeping for the second film. That's the way I found the equilibrium. Then, in the second one, I will have time to develop some characters that were left aside a little bit. The second movie brings Shani back, putting her in the center of the action. But that isn't without trials and tribulations, as the film comes to a close. Zendaya said during an interview with ComicBook.com, There's heartbreak, there's betrayal, there's loss and confusion. I feel like it's quite a painful ending. It doesn't end like, oh, someone won. It's not that. It's a lot of broken dreams and hearts.